Hello, my name is Arma Ansarvar and I'm a Master of Bioinformatics student at the University of British Columbia and the Bureau Lab at BC Cancer Genome Sciences Center. This presentation is about STASH, a data structure based on stochastic tile hashing which I've been developing. With the decrease in the sequencing costs over the last decade, many bioinformatics algorithms have been based on storing and identifying sequencing read substrings. Hence, there has been a growing need for methods to store k-mers, and more specifically spade seeds, which can tolerate mismatches. Inspired by data structures such as the Bloom filter or its extensions, we introduced stochastic tile hashing or stashing in order to describe large collections of nucleotide sequences and store and query sequence mapping information without any alignment. The proposed underlying data structure is called stash that can answer the question of whether two sequences originate from similar genomic regions. The underlying structure of STASH is a two-dimensional set of t-bit tiles where the rows or the memory loci are indicated by hash values of subsequences and the columns and the stored tile values are indicated by two hashes of the sequence IDs. Having an input sequence, it is hashed using the anti-hash algorithm with sliding windows of symmetric spaced patterns and the resulting values determine which rows of the memory block to update. In order to combine the anti-hash output values with the two sequence ID hashes, we can see that for the ith spaced pattern, the ith most significant bits of the other spaced patterns are concatenated in order to address an index in the sequence ID hash tiles. So here for the first hash function output, the first bits of the other three hash function outputs are concatenated which results in 001. So we will address index 1 in the sequence ID hashes, which leads to filling column 3 with the value 7. Having H spaced patterns, each sliding window position will update H rows in stash, and we call these H access rows a stash frame. In order to answer the question of whether two genomic regions are covered by the same set of reads, we define a score metric called the number of matches, which captures the similarity between any two frames of interest. And it's calculated such that each tile in the first frame is compared to H tiles in the second frame residing in the same column. The number of matches is incremented if there is at least one equal value to the examining tile in the corresponding column of frame 2. In order to have a more general view of a genomic region and ignore sequence errors and gaps, we define windows of frames, where each window consists of frames that have a distance of a stride with each other, and we compare two windows by counting the maximum number of matches between all pairs of their frames. Our expectation is that uh, for small distances on a genomic region, the number of matches would be higher because the corresponding frames would be coming from the same reads when filling stash. And the Salston score, which is based on the following formula and it implies the relatedness of two frames, would be lower. On the other hand, for large distances on a genomic region, we expect the number of matches to be lower because there would be no connection between the underlying frames and the Salston score to be higher. As for the experimentation, we have filled the stash with the experimental Oxford nanopore long sequencing reads from chromosome 21 of this human individual. And by fixing a window on a randomly chosen position, which is the middle position here, along the reference human genome GRCH38 chromosome 21, and comparing it with a sliding window that moves from the left to the right of this chosen position, we calculate the number of matches and also the Salston score values between them. On the left, we can see that as the sliding window gets closer to the window of interest, the number of matches increase, which is because more common reads uh, cover the closer neighboring areas. And on the right, the Salston score values in logarithm scale increase as we get further away from the window of interest, which is as we expected. As for the second experiment, we fill stash with the same experimental human chromosome 21 reads as the previous experiment. And by considering these reads, 
We choose a random position on them, which helps us extract two windows with a distance of delta with each other. And we give these windows as input to stash and calculate the number of matches between them. By repeating this whole process several times, we get to a distribution of the number of matches. And on, in this plot, we can see that when we increase the delta value, which is the distance between two windows, the number of matches distributions get closer to the one of unrelated windows, which have a distance of infinity with each other. These red lines show the confidence interval of 80% on the unrelated window distribution. And this whole process shows us how Stash is able to separate between related and unrelated windows. To conclude, we have introduced a novel hash-based data structure called Stash that provides an efficient representation of sequence data with demonstrated utility in identifying regional patterns and overlapping sequence frames without any need for sequencing read alignments. We expect Stash to provide benefits to a wide variety of applications in genomics research. Our software is available in this GitHub link, and our funding sources are NSERC, National Institutes of Health, Genome Canada and Genome British Columbia. Thank you very much.